The following presentation was recorded at the 2012 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond sponsors in 2012 for helping make these videos possible. Coming out, um, my name is Dante Taylor. I work for, at Media Current as a creative director, and welcome to the desktop to desktop to mobile using Display Suite. So again, you guys, you know, feel free to stop me if you have any questions. Anytime along the way, it's more conversational. I don't have any problem with that? Um, as we move forward. As I said, you can, you can, uh, I'm a creative director at Media Current. It's a small shop out of uh, Alpharetta, Georgia, just, I'll uh, say, 30, 30 minutes or so, 45 minutes from Atlanta. Um, you can reach me by my handle, Theme Master, on Twitter. So here's some of the key assumptions I have. Um, if you're familiar with using the Views module, you know, this session is for you. Um, if you're familiar with uh, fields and content types, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you understand the basic concepts of theming. Like, you know, we won't go through a very detailed uh, over, overview of theming. Uh, I'm also assuming you understand uh, how to install Drupal modules, the basics, that type of thing. And this is now, if you've used panels, this is not a panels bashing session. Um, but with that said, it's kind of like panels and display suite. They're kind of, you know, the panels been around for a long time. It, it you know, it's vetted. It, 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 you know, it has its its charm. But you know, the face off between these two, they don't have to be a, a, a conflict conflict of interest. You can use both on, on any given site. These are just different methodologies for displaying data. Um, because you know who I'm, I'm rooting for in this, um, in that, in that, that battle. And I think he won too. Um, just, just side note. But they can get along. And that's it. Okay, one of the purposes of, of Display Suite is to allow you to take full control over the UI and using a drag and drop interface. That's similar to panels, more, more or less. Um, you can arrange nodes, views, comments, user data. Uh, without having to work through dozens of templates, template files. You don't have to create, you don't have to, even though you, you can, you don't have to do that with, with Display Suite. Um, it's packaged with predefined list of layouts similar to panels, you know, no, no big thing there. You can add to it as well. It's created by, uh, or the module is maintained and written by um, Christoph Jaeger, or De Jaeger. Um, how many of you would, uh, you know, count yourself as hardcore Jupilers. You, you, this, this young man, you, you, you're a hardcore Jupiler? Okay, well, let's just see. He, now, he has a Drupal tattoo. How many of you guys have a Drupal tattoo? Nobody has a Drupal tat? Well, guess you, guess you can't count yourself as being hardcore, right? You know, anyway, he, he's, um, he's a pretty uh, good guy. I never met him, but from what I understand, he is um, he's very good at what he, at his craft, so give him credit, and I wouldn't go as far as getting a tattoo, but I can understand, he's dedicated. You know, you want those people on, on your team. Um, give me, give you a few statistics about Display Suite. Uh, and one thing I wanna highlight is mainly out of 9,000, you know, 728 modules, this is ranking 113th in that list. So what that tells me is that, hey, this is popular, or it's, it's gaining ground. It, 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 it has some, um, some staying power, so to, so to speak. Um, 84,000 some odd downloads, um, and you know, 21,000 installs, operating installs, so it's gaining ground. It's pretty good, pretty good module. You know, so panels versus display suite. Some of the, now, if you notice at the bottom of the, the screen, I, I put the source here, and, I, and I'll post this on SlideShare so everyone can download this um, um, from, the, from the Charlotte ADUG site. But some of the key differences is that, you know, Display Suite always starts with a single object, such as a node or, you know, com uh, you know, comment 
or um, or something, you know, in, in that range. And it offers a way to configure um, the display by rearranging fields f for 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 the node that has for, for it starts with a five of it it goes up to a five column system, basically is what I'm trying to say. Um, panels is is also focused on combining different objects such as blocks, nodes, views, and et cetera together in a variety a variety of layouts. Um, as mentioned, panel pages uh, offer the option to change the layout and um, layout of the detail page of a node, and you have the option to create several variants based on the argument. Now, you know, that being said, um, Display Suite doesn't quite, um, you know, have the variant option that panels does where you can pass in. I mean, you, you can kind of simulate it by creating code fields and or, or using code fields, and we'll get to that in a minute to kind of do the same thing, but it's not quite like panels in that way. Um, you know, you could, def this display suite, you can define layouts or, or what they call no de details or, or view modes, basically, um, to take the arguments. Uh, and we can, we'll go through that a little bit later. And one thing about panels versus display suite is that panels is restricted to one level of grouping. What that means is you, you with display suite, you can use s contributed modules like f um, f field groups, and you can group your data using that same module inside of the same node. So, you know, that's, that's one benefit. Key concepts, view modes. This is, this is very important because those are the different, you know, how you, you how you configure the end the end display that that would be called your view mode. So that's a very important concept, and we'll go through these. And I have a, an example so to show you as we as we move forward. Code fields is very important. You can add custom PHP to you know you from custom PHP to blocks to anything that you that Drupal runs in his bootstrap, you can run through a cold field, basically, a di different flavors of a cold field. Um, styles, you can add custom styles um, to, to at the field level and also at the region level. So what are view modes? Again, view modes are another name for layouts in Display Suite. Um, they can control how the page will render via templates, so you can, it comes with default templates, but you can also override that and use your own custom templates, similar like panels. Really, panels and display, su display suite use the same C2s um, module to, to generate the display. So, it's, you know, you really, w when we go through the steps, you create a new display suite um, layout, new layout, the same way you would more or less panels, if that makes sense. So, um, you know, one last point, unlike panelized module, you can't manage display, the, um, manage display the size, excuse me, the display size placement of regions through the UI. Although using CSS, it is possible to achieve the same results. Like panels, you can move around the, you can move around the regions easier. You know, the, you can move around the content a lot easier in, in the display. The panel display suite is more um, where you really can't move the regions as easily without going into the CSS and doing it. I mean, it, you, you, you'll see later once you get into the UI, even though you can do it through CSS, but it's just not quite the same paradigm. So what are, and please stop me if you guys have any questions at any time. Um, so what are code fields? Again, code fill is, is a way to, it's like a, it, you could think of it like CCK, but it, it, they have ver various options for you to add um, blocks or, or you know, just you know, hand-coded PHP directly and make it a field, uh, make it a, a fieldable data that you can then put into your node or comment or whatever entity it's attached to. Um, Again, you can access any variable that the theme layer can access. 
Um, same thing, styles, CSS, basically how to get custom CSS classes on each region and field that this, they gives you away. So let's just get to kind of installing it. You know, use Drush, any, any, you guys use Drush? I know you guys used in the last session. Um, Drush is pretty good. You just download it. The, the machine name is um, DS, Display Suite. One of the things to really point out um, here is when you download it, make sure you inst um, in obviously install the Display Suite, but the extras is what will give you a lot of power when you go in to start to manage the site. It has a lot of built-in capabilities. Forms, something, you know, if, if you're a designer, I'm, I'm a designer by, by, by trade, by, by nature. So, you know, one thing when you're building a site for a client, sometimes you don't think about is the, the UI, the, the forms that they will put in their data. What well, Display Suite gives you ability to even customize at that level, not just what's publicly presented, but also what's privately managed. So you, you could, by you turn on the forms, display, you could manage that. And also search, it works, it integrates well with even solar, Apache solar, if, if, if you guys, any of you guys work with that, it works with the default Drupal API and, and Apache solar. So it's pretty versatile. Um, again, you know, so I'm going to show you an example of this, but the one way, because many ways, especially when you install the extra, that you can get to you start using the Space Suite. But the one place you go is under the structure, because it's counted as a stru structural um, element, is it'll be in that list, uh, the same place where views are, um, you know, that same list, and you, 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 know, you, you click on Display Suite. And then in that list, you'll see several different um, elements. You'll see the fields, that's where you put your custom fields. Layouts, that's the, the types of layouts that, you, that are pr um, provided by the system. The styles, the, obviously the CSS, and the view modes is where you can select the, um, or manage, or create new view modes and attach them to entities, which will be like nodes, or comments, or user, or profile, whatever. Yes, exactly. View modes. You can you can attach those do those different entities to to um, to d the different pieces. How you doing, Matthew? Uh, um. Well, now if you this is the space we allow will allow you. But you can use custom code fields to manage the different display, you know, from mobile, the different mobile types. But this mainly is to just manage your, um, in an intelligent way, to manage your, your UI and different components without creating extra templates, custom templates and overrides to, 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 to manage the placement of elements on the page. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't do that by, by default, um, you know, and my title is a little bit misleading. I, that there is, I have, I use, and I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but Omega, you ever heard of Omega theme? Okay, okay, well I have an example of an Omega theme, okay, and Omega, you, you know, that's, it, it's, it's um, built for responsive design, okay, oh, meaning, responsive meaning that it knows using media queries what the size, you know, what's the size of your browser, and then it, it does, it adds style sheets based on that, and it rearranges, it changes the grid structure based on, you know, the, uh, the device that you're using. So that's what I would, that's what I would use in conjunction with this to, to create a mobile friendly site. Does that make sense? And I can show you an example of when I do responsive design and the grid and all that stuff like that. Um, so, um, well, this is an example of, of a view mode, and I'm gonna walk you through in the demo uh, how to create a view, a view mode and how to attach it to an entity, or, or uh, attach it to, um, a, I guess, a, 
a, a piece of um, of content in Drupal. Um, and you know, this is where you uh, just if you go through the process and edit your content type, and you go to at the bottom, you'll see the display suite. Once you install it, there's a um, there is a you know a custom you know, display setting where you pick the layout that you're interested in using. And then here, this is where you start to add your, your different build modes, which is like, oh, I want a different display for the teaser. Oh, I want a different display for the, the no full view versus, you know, this is what it looks like in search, that type of thing. You, you can go through and change it. Um, Context. If you use if you use context, um, mobile tools. There's a module called mobile tools that will allow you. you, you are you familiar with context? Okay. Um, well, I'll show you. I'll show you where where it is and how how kind of how it works. Um, there is a way to. You 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 context is a way, and it replaces Drupal's block management system. You familiar with block system? Drupal's block management system. Um, like you go to the block overview, blocks overview, and it'll show all the blocks on that you have available to you. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's fine. I can show you that once we get to this coming up soon. Um, you can use what, what's called mobile tools, and it, it will give you the ability to select your different device and show different pieces depending. Um, how do you add custom layouts? Custom layouts um, is written, like again, this is built off of C tools. Um, it uses the same paradigm more, more or less. Um, but the simple way, straightforward way is, you know, you create a function and it's a dot I include file. And I'll show you on my local environment where, where it lives. It lives directly um, under the, um, um, you know, the, in the theme folder directly at the top, you don't, you know, don't, don't divide it out any, any or don't organize it anymore. You just, you just put your, your DS layouts folder there and then that's where you put all your layouts, that type of thing. And then inside of, if this particular, I, I've chosen to do an article, custom article layout, you know, you, you create your function and then add your regions. Um, in an array, and you move, you know, you you manage it that way. Um, let's see. Same, you know, this is just basic, the CSS that you add. Well, if you add a CSS file um, and you name it, you know, articles.css, it'll pick it up automatically, and that's where you would manage your styles. And this is the, the template structure. Um, you know that, and I'm using HTML5, and that's why you see section and you know different the different entity um, um, tag or elements. So let me get through. So I'm gonna show you a good example of this. Once we this is well in inside of that article content type, you will select your layout and. By adding that new layer, it'll show, once you put your cache, it'll show at the bottom and you can start using it. So, to the demo part, so I can, I'm going to walk you through, and I'm assuming, how many of you guys use views? All right, everybody in this room use, uses views. Okay, so, I'm going to show you how you would go about Okay, well, let's see, it's a but y'all can't see that, can you? Can you guys see that? Is it? I could change the color if need be. Um, all right. So let me, let's just go. Now, this is what you're, this is using mobile tools. I'm just, while I'm here, this is kind of um, one of the ways that you can, kind of trick the system to, you can add a code field and then you can put this, you know, this uh, 
function in there to detect which which display you're on to show a piece of the the um, you know the um, that that field that particular field. But for for so I created a view. This is a view that displays on the front page, and typically, you know, we all get this, these views and they're unformatted, more or less, right? So I just created a generic view and pull back and use the styles and pull back these images. So, what if I wanted to, let's say, put the image, you know, float the image to, to the left and put the content on the right, and you know, the, the typical de designery thing, right? What you would do is, for one. Um, You would go through, and you would. In in your view, there's a show, right? There's this on the formatting, and you would click on that. And if you install the module, you'll see that there's a display suite option, right? So you apply that to this view. And this is your view mode. You know, I'm just to say, I'm gonna call it teaser. You know, well, you know, it's it, this is pre, it's built in, but I'm gonna select. Okay, I want you to use the default teaser view, and you go ahead and you apply, you apply that, right? So it's not, it's, it's. I have to save that. Now you notice, okay, well, it's nothing has changed. So what you have to do because you have to go in, and this, this will show if you turn on the extras and turn on all those options, you'll see that Manage Display will p appear as one of the options to, you know, t to manage the display. And you would go in and you would say, okay, well, right now they're stacked. So what I want to do, and you can see the custom when I add, and I'll show you that in the code where it's at, but you can say, well, I want, I want two columns, right? And I want that to be and this is the, you notice now, this is on the article content type, and you see a manage display. Manage fields, that's what the, the administrator see, and manage display is what the public sees. So you say manage two columns, and you save that. You say, uh oh, well, not, nothing there. Let me go back, let me go back again because I have to actually add, now I have to place content in, in those different regions. You see that at the, that the top, is right and the left. Now this could be, you know, it's the same thing for all the other layouts. So I'm going to add the image to the left, right? And I'm going to find, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to find the body. Where's this body? Okay. I'm going to go add that to the right, right? And I'm going to add the title to the right. So I'm gonna go up here. So I have that. You know, obviously you can rear, you can arrange them, um, but that's a basic setup, right? Let's see. Is there a more link in here? Oh, there's a read more link. I want to add that to the to the right. I'm gonna put that directly up under the body. That's that's a common workflow. So um, let me save that. So what you should see is now you have that same layout for that view. And it's connected to the view, so you can manage the views back and forth. Um, you know, and if I switch themes, uh, and this is the Omega theme. If I switch themes and I say, okay, I want, um, oops, let me go back to, Okay, so you still, it still maintained, you know, maintain, this is the grid, this is what I was telling you about the responsiveness, and I, see the grid is automatically turned on, but see how this grid changes, see how it changes, that's tablet view, and that's a mobile. You so and you still see that layout there. Now you can, because you know there there are some options here. You can um, 
you can have, you can go in here and alter this code and add code fields to have certain things switch out. Um, and I'm gonna show you an example of a code field. Uh, how you add a custom, a custom field here to this display. So there's several ways you can do it. Let me just go back to the example I put in the slides earlier so you get an idea. So I wanna add um, a cu custom code, right? Um, I have some, some examples here. So if you wanted to add, th this is called a code field. This is where you add your PHP. I'm gonna edit that. You see, the, uh, everything. Whether you you can attach, you you figure you you figure out which where this particular um, variable you want where it's coming from. Whether it be the node object, or it could be taxonomy, a user, or DS views, or you know comments. But everything how you write it out will be that um, display suite uses entity, and that's that's the root. I guess the root of your object. That's that's where it starts. So no matter if it's a comment or whatever, it's just entity, and then you start your class structure from that point on to, to, to print your data. I just chose to do something simple like entity name, which, because I have it attached to the node object. So, and I'm gonna save that. And, you know, this is important. You, this is display suite code. It adds a text formatting field automatically when you install it. Um, I think they're the private the same. I think it's the same thing. They just make sure that, you know, if you don't have that enabled, because a lot of times um, on sites they tell you to disable that field for security reasons, blah, blah, blah. I think they add their own, so it's lacuna matata, no worries, right? Um, you know, here's a cool thing, and I can show this. You can, you can also work with tokens, you know, absolute URL. Um, I just seen I'm just add a token there. Um also you can say okay, enable tokens. And you save that. Okay, so that's that's uh that's the username. So I want to what if I want to add that to to my display? What you do is you go back in here. Let me show you an alternate way to get to it, just so multiple ways to get there is very important. Um, see, you go here and you can go to the content type and you manage display. It's the same, same, same avenue. Um, and um, you know, so I'm going to I'm managing the teaser, right? because that's what I attached to that view. So now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find that username and I'm gonna add that to the, to the left. So in theory, we should get the username and we should get, what, 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 what token did I add? I had the date. Yeah, I had added the date. All right, so, so we have that to the left. Um, I'm gonna put that underneath the image. I'm gonna show you some other cool things you can do that Display Suite gives you the ability to do without having to go create custom, you know, code. Um, so I'm gonna go back. In theory, I should see. Okay, so I see I have my name, and I have, you know, the date, the me the medium format. I think I put that in there. So you see that that's a custom custom code field that you can, you know, and anything that the um, system, you know, has an object, you can add directly that way. Um, let me go back here and say, okay, well, you know, I wanna add, I wanna, what if I wanna make this, you know, I wanna do some work here to the body, I wanna change the tags around it, I wanna add a style, that type of thing. So when you go back here, you manage it. So, um, that thing says wrap h2. Now first, I'm gonna have to, for this to work, I'm gonna have to take that off. Um, I, I can link it, but 
I have to take that off because I want to use the uh, the fill setup. And the extra, see, gives you the ability to do a, what they call a full reset. It just strips all the H um, HTML out, and it's just very simple. Um, you know, minimum, it's the same thing. You can, it'll strip out the content, but here's where I added a custom style. Use one of the fields that I'll show you later, you can add a, you know, a style there. Um, but the full expert view is what, uh, what this, uh, this comes with display suite. So, so you have, let's say, you can change the label here you can change the outer wrapper. Let's just say you want to put that into, make that a div. And you want to give it a class of test one. And let's just say you gave it a wrapper and you want to make it a list item. So you put the list, the beginning of the, the list item, right? And you want to give that a class. I'm just call that T2. And then you want to, so if you have a list item, you have to have the li as, as well. So you can give that a T3. I'm going to update that. See that? Let me, let me just do the, let me just do the firebug thing. And in theory, I should have some classes here. Oop. All right, let me go down. You see that? You have a, a the, the div that we added, the test one. We have the U, UL element, um, the, the list element, and we have, and all, and all these elements have the classes, and we still have the benefit of having the link, you know, because we linked it, you click that check mark. So you can, you know, you can start to see the power of this, th this particular, you know, module where you can, I haven't added any, any of the templates. I'm, I'm just doing it all through the UI. I'm not, um, you, you can even add blocks. What, what if, you know, what if you have a custom view or, or you know, you want to add a block just to this, you know, to this item here, to, to this list here. What you do is you go back. Um, that's the wrong one. Um, see that custom code fields? You say, well, I want to, I want to add a, um, a dynamic, oh, excuse me, I, I want to add a block. And you can say, I want that. pick default. So I'm, I'm basically adding this block in. Let me go back and, and manage the display here. So that's it right there. You just add that to the left. And it should see that search block is added to add each each query. Now you obviously this is not user friendly. I mean you wouldn't want to do that, but you know you get the point that you can add a block. You also can do, and that's that's a block field. You also can add dynamic, what they call a dynamic field. And that's you know think it's just it's like panels in 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 this way. Um, go back here, mind you. See I'm I'm editing the view mode that I'm on teaser. And I'm going to add a dynamic field here. No, let me save that. Um, to go back here. Um, now, notice though, you, you have to actually, hold on. 
Let me, you have to actually add, there you go. You have to select content to add to it. Um, it's just like, anybody use panels? Okay, so you see it's the same, same scenario here. It, yeah, because it, it really uses C tools. Everything, panels and, and display suite uses C tools. You're building it. Huh? What's that? I didn't, we, we, yeah, pa yeah, you're right. Page manager um, for this. Um, yeah, thank you for that correction. Thank you. Um, um, so I'm at node. Node. Um, you know, like no terms. Well, I think I haven't. Well, I think I do. Um, but you get you get the point. So you update this. Um, I don't think I have any. Oh, duh, I, I didn't enable it, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, go back here. I'm add that to the left as well. Mm. Well, it's not quite working, but I think you guys get the gist of what I'm saying. Um, here, at this point, you guys have any questions on this? I mean, I'm. Go, go ahead. Um, that's a good question. This is a good question because it's okay. Okay, that's a good question. The question is, w at what point does this using Display Suite come in come into play for a designer slash you know developer or configuration? Um, am I um, you know creating the design first and then using this to configure, or am I just using this to to do the configuration and creating the design later? Is that correct? Is that the uh, okay? So um, the catch-22 is that I, in the ideal world, in the, in the Walgreens world, you would do the design and you would get everything you want to look, you know, the way you, you get the display in terms of just mock-ups. You should get everything to look exactly the way you want. And then you would configure it to, to meet your design. That, that's, that's a Walgreens world. But in the real world, what happens often is that you, are uh, working in a group in a team environment, and you may get a developer, or you may get, uh, you know, even e you know, I would say even a, a, a themer or somebody who's kind of configuring the site to pass to you to theme. They may be putting together, they may put together a view, and they say, okay, here, here you go, um, designer guy, a, a gal, a girl. Um, I'm, I'm done. I've put together my view, make it look just like the mockup. Okay, well, some of these, you know, you, that's when you go and say, okay, well, I'm going to, now I'm, I'm, I need to add a class here. I need to, you know, move this over here. That's where this comes in handy because you're, you're now, you're not doing as much code as you would, like, you, to, get, to get a complex design, you may have to go in and create a few view templates just to get it to look like your mock-up. So this is a way to kind of... Bridget, does that answer your question? So, um, I would consider this a a, um, a middle ground for configuration specialists or developers and themers slash designers. This is kind of a place where they can hand you th their finished product in terms of you know he, I have all the content types built and everything's done. And here's, you know, and, you know, you take it the rest of the way to do the rest of the theming. And this is kind of the middle ground. This is a paradigm, per se, of theming. Because, you know, you can do the same thing in panels or you can do custom templates. Any, any other questions? Um, 
Okay. Have I run into conflicts between the Space Suite and any other modules? Um, yes, I think, what do they call it? Entity, um, it's one module called, um, no entity or something like that. It's, um, uh, it, I think it's, it's, oh, it's, it's something like that. Um, it, some, sometimes, um, it depends, and that I run into conflicts with that. I can't give you, I can't think of an exact example, but sometimes the display suite, the, because it's managing the entity, it, it creates, it throws bugs. W one, one, um, one point here, let me show you this. Uh, emergency. It has the ability for you to just kind of turn it off temporarily so you can debug something um, and like kind of disable things temporarily so you can figure out what's going on. And I think normally, and I haven't directly run into this, but I think the, the why this is there is because if you try to include a node inside of a node, kind of it, it, ha it has a problem with, with, with rendering it. I think that that's, that's why that's there. I haven't used it or had a, uh, um, a need to use it. I uh, wish I could answer that question a little bit better, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know of any known issues. I do know that the developer is trying to get this as a part of Drupal core. I know he's done a start an initiative. Um, I think he has a good shot at it. You know, based on what this is like a logical step to what CCK and views. This is a logical bridge between the two. It's not that difficult to really understand it, you know, and it takes the, all the complexity out of theming, um, you know, just basic things. You still have, you still would have to maybe create custom templates, but this, this goes a long way. It, um, so, anybody have any, any other, um, any other, Questions or okay. Oh, that's a good question. So, does the Display Suite use does the Display Suite use features so you can push it to production or any other environment? That's right. Okay. Um, yes, it does, and I think we could probably it it. It integrates with features well. Um, I think we can create one. It creates the layout. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, See that? Display suite. So these are these are the styles. Um, settings. I have to be honest. I haven't used this very uh, much in my normal production workflow, even though. I know we, you know we're supposed to be using features and such, and but I haven't um, done it um, as often as I should. But I do know it it, it works um, more or less. So, um, and let's see. I think there's one other item I wanted to. I think I may have cut uh, covered all the fields. Do you guys want to know how to add the the, the custom styles? That yes or no? <laughs> um, 
If not, we could just wrap it. Okay. All right. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Let's see. So I'm going to go here. So you have, sometimes you have a need to add a custom style per region, you know, without having to go create a new template. So I'm going to call this class name. This is the class name, obviously. Class, class us. And and this is obviously the what you see in the in the drop down. Okay. Um this is per field because with display suite you can also manage per field data. So you could if you have a field and you want to, you know, give it column structure or do something creative with it, you know, you can do it that way too. So I'm just randomly. Oops. Oops. Um, I'm just name that one, so I'm gonna get confused. All right, so let me save that. So now we should have the ability, if you go back in and you say, okay, I wanna, I wanna add something to that title. Yeah, that's what I wanna do. That's what you do. So first you go find that title and, oh, it's the wrong way. Let me cancel. Uh, field display, excuse me. So that, or the default, and you, you get these four reset, but mainly you can see where the class shows up for the field style, and that, that's the one I added, and update. And then let me go down here. Mind you, you know, you can add, you can add all these fields down here too, but for the region, you know, the class, the style I added for eat per region, you can say, hey, you know, I want to add the class us to the left and also add that same class to the right. And if it's done right, I should be able to inspect that. Um, See that? It added it at the class six. And then the region, the DS region, uh, the left. See, it added the class us to the left. And it also added it to the right. Um, for a themer, this is, I mean, this saves you a lot of code. Because a lot of times, um, especially if you're, in a, if you're working in a team environment, just just um, you needing those classes to just get something done. Sometimes you have to go back to the developer in some cases and say, hey, could you add this? And they're like, man, you know, they have to go through and find the AP, you know, find, figure out a way to get it in. And then in some cases you have to go through and figure out how to add it. But this is an easy way to get things, in, you know, to get your classes in and not have to go fiddle with code. So, um, you know, that being said, guys, um, I really appreciate you. Um, this is where to go get help. Um, again, I'm gonna put this on the Charlotte site, make sure it's available for everyone. If, if you need it right now, I could just give it to you, download it and email it to you. Um, but these are some helpful videos and walk through. And as always, you know, you know, don't forget to clear your cash. Happy theming.
plant stacks are everywhere. This is the way to, to better utilize uh, all your resources and it makes managing all your resources pretty easy. All of the innovation is happening in open source. The, the collaborative nature and of the uh, you know of the community and, and the speed at which these uh, these you know these these deficiencies these bugs are getting discovered and then fixed is a uh, thing that really shows the power of the you know of the open source community. It is global, and it's definitely because of the users. Community people are extremely friendly and uh, always ready to help. If you go on IRC any day, you'll see these guys helping each other out, and they're all doing it like in a selfless manner. The product is transparent for everyone. Everyone can look at the code base. Um, Everyone can see how CloudStack is, is being built. Nothing, nothing is proprietary. Everything is open. In many ways, it's absolutely vital to the, to the ongoing health of CloudStack. The most exciting event uh, in recent memory for me uh, was our first developer boot camp. Uh, and you know, our call gave people, I think, maybe two weeks notice to come attend. I was expecting 25 or, or 30 people. Uh, so we ended up with uh, 87 <laughs> people uh, and had to go get more chairs uh, into the room twice. Everything within cloud computing is commodity and is open source. And so I, I don't think that you will, uh, you, you'll see anywhere where open source is not pervasive in cloud computing. And so I, I, think, it's, uh, I think it's an assumption, I think. When you talk about cloud computing, you're really talking about open source cloud computing. CloudStack is a robust solution for large deployments. You have dozens of data centers and thousands of servers in each data center. Uh, these um, uh, hardware is going to fail and CloudStack is designed to handle, number one, that mass scale. Number two, it's designed to handle the failure that inevitably happens. Uh, large deployments. We started working on CloudStack over four years ago uh, and you know it was the original set of people working on it uh, had a background of delivering software to telcos and service providers. Lots of QA, lots of users actually using it. High availability is the key feature. Uh, multiple hypervisor support. Uh, different network models, you can pick up whatever suits you better. CloudStack management server can be deployed in different physical machines. It definitely has a huge footprint, it's being deployed everywhere. There's a major movie studio that uh, um, they were using CloudStack, they were using it to transcode video, and I thought that was terribly fascinating. What I found more fascinating is what they did during lunch where they would spin up uh, you know, 50 or 60 game servers, then as soon as lunch was over, they would destroy all the instances and go back to doing real work. CloudStack is vast. Uh, it touches so many different aspects, and there's no one person that's kind of like a master of all those realms. I think CloudStack as a project is going to be uh, one of the leaders simply because it's some of the most featureful and, and uh, and robust platforms out there. I don't see any limits to the cloud stack. When we created Asterisk over a decade ago, we could not have imagined that Asterisk would not only become the most widely adopted open source communication software on the planet, but that it would impact the entire industry in the way that it has. Today, Asterisk has found its way into more than 170 countries and virtually every Fortune 1000 company. The success of Asterisk has enabled a transition of power from the hands of the traditional proprietary phone vendors into the hands of the users and administrators of phone systems. Using this power, our customers have created all sorts of business-changing applications, from small office phone systems to mission-critical call centers to international carrier networks. In fact, there's even an entire country whose communications infrastructure runs on asterisks. 
The gym has always been about creating technology that expands communications capabilities in ways that we could never have imagined. And that's part of what's game changing about Digium. Today, we're doing it again. This time by introducing a new family of HDIP phones that extends control of the user all the way to the desktop. The launch of these new products represents the next phase in Digium's history of innovation. These are the first and only IP phones designed to fully leverage the power of Asterisk. When we first discussed our expectations for building a family of phones for use with Asterisk, our requirements were pretty simple. We asked the team to build the phones such that they were easy to install, integrate, provision, and use. I think you'll soon agree our engineers have delivered on that goal. User feedback is validating that when it comes to operation with Asterisk based systems, including our own SwitchFox based product, these are the easiest to use best integrated, most interoperable products on the market today. The Digium family of phones will initially include three IP desk phones, uniquely designed to complement any Asterisk or SwitchFox based solution. These phones are different for a number of reasons. First, they're exclusively designed for use with Asterisk. Secondly, we've made it really easy to auto-discover and provision the phones. Next, we've made it easy for the phones to access information inside of Asterisk, allowing tight coupling between an application and the phone. Additionally, we've created an applications engine that allows users and developers to create and run their own apps on the phone. And finally, we've done all of this at a very compelling price point. At Digium, we're always thinking of ways to give our customers the best value in business phone systems and also give them the power to create their own solutions for any communications challenge. We'll continue to push the boundaries, not only to make Astros cooler and faster and more technologically feature rich, but to make Asterisk and VoIP communications even easier. And together, we'll change the way the world communicates. Again.